So to all of our attendees, good afternoon. Um, my name is Robert. I am the Director of Business Development and Franchise Operations, uh, part of the VF Franchise Consulting Team uh, located in Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, I will be the MC and host for our exciting event. And today we're privileged to be joined by some very distinguished guests from the Helen Duran Educational Group. For more than 35 years, they've been industry leaders in early childhood development and educational franchising. We'll just wait for one or two more of our panelists to join, and then we'll get started. Actually, before I introduce everyone, uh, I'd like to talk about a few housekeeping points. And then I'd like to take a moment to explain our role at VF Franchise Consulting. Uh, so we will not have a question and answer session at the end of this program, because basically this whole thing is an interview of me asking the most common questions that potential franchisees want to know from a group like Kellen Duran. However, we will be following up with everyone who registered and especially all of our attendees afterwards by email. So please respond, uh, ask us any of your questions and we'll be happy to get back to you with uh, answers or schedule a one-on-one -on -one call to discuss uh, privately your particular territory and what brands you might do. Now via Franchise Consulting, uh, we are uh, a franchise focused on the Asian market. We cover territories from the Middle East and India, all the way to Australia and New Zealand, up to Korea and Japan. But our headquarters is in Vietnam, and we actually have offices and partners all across key markets throughout the region. And we do a lot of different things. We offer franchise training, we offer a wide range of business consulting and project work in the region. But our main two divisions, number one, we help companies and brands develop a franchise or licensing system so that they can use that channel really to expand their business either in their own country or throughout the region. And two, our sales and marketing team is very active in finding um, qualified franchisees across Asia for all of our clients. We are very selective in the clients that we represent. We focus only on 15 or 20 at a time and only on ones we really feel are going to be, have a high potential for success. And that's very important for us because uh, we've been doing this for more than 12 years and we want to make sure that we can make uh, successful partnerships between a franchisor like Helen Duran and you as a franchisee. And we are very pleased to be here to discuss with one of those great high potential clients, the Helen Duran Educational Group. They have three great brands that we'll discuss today, Helen Duran English, Helen Duran Kindergarten, and the Math Writers Program. And just before we begin, if I would at, let uh, ask everyone to shut off their mics unless they're speaking, it will reduce the background noise so everybody can hear clearly. So as mentioned, um, we are extremely pleased to be assisting the Helen Duran Education Group in their ex Asian expansion <clears throat> and having their key team members here with, including the CEO and founder herself, Mrs. Helen Duran. We would also like to welcome Mr. Eli, Ms. Renine, Mr. Arez, Mr. Richard, who's just joining us, and hopefully Helen herself shortly. We have collected a wide range of questions um, from potential franchisees and investors, uh, and we're going to ask our Helen Duran team, we're going to challenge them a little bit about their brand, see if they know all the answers. My first question would be, I'd like to invite people to introduce themselves so our audience really knows who you are. Uh, maybe Eli, we'll start with you. Um, if you could just introduce uh, yourself and your history with the company, um, any interesting facts you want to share, that'd be great. Can you hear me well? Yes. Awesome. 
Well, my name is Eli. I have been with uh, Helen Doron for seven years now. Until January 2020, I was mending the role of the business training manager. I was servicing the entire franchise network. I was also an account manager for Eastern European countries, such as Bulgaria, Croatia, Serbia, Slovenia, and Montenegro. In January 2020, I was appointed as the deputy for the chief customer officer. And two months ago, I stepped into the role of the chief customer officer. And for those of you who are not familiar with the term, the chief customer officer provides a comprehensive view of the customer to internal stakeholders and creates a, a corporate strategy uh, to maximize customer acquisition, retention, and profitability. Good. And uh, if you don't mind me asking you, what's your favorite thing about working for the Helen Duran company? Well, that definitely be the fact that we're helping people fulfill their dreams. Uh, if we look at our own employees, they do things they enjoy doing and they love, and each one of them does it in his field of expertise. In regards to our franchisees, they, they have the benefit of owning a business with a proven business model. Um, they also get the necessary support to make it into a successful business. Our teachers, on the other hand, uh, give children the necessary skills and values to be Our students benefit from high quality in a joyful and interactive way. Well, that's a lot of reasons to enjoy working for your company. So, Definitely. you know, it's Definitely. always it's always great when we enjoy our jobs, right? Always, always. So, thank you, Eli. Um, maybe we'll ask Ranine next. Uh, maybe you could give us a, a brief introduction and, and tell us what you do at the Helen Duran Company. Yes, of course. Um, can you hear me well? Yep. Yep, we can hear you good. So my name is Ranine. I started with the Helen Duran English 18 years ago um, as a Helen Duran English teacher. After a few years, I became a Helen Duran franchisee after falling in love with the method and with the results that you can see. Um, in 2015, Helen asked me to become a part of the math writer department as I have a degree in math and computer science. So I did. Uh, I started with content writing, then I became a teacher trainer. And in 2018, I became uh, the math writer development manager. Um, a year ago, and I started a new role as the pedagogic department manager for the Helen Drone English, Helen Drone Kindergarten math writers. You've been busy person. Kind of. <laughs> so you started when you were about two years old, right? If you've been working there by 18 years already? I will not answer that. <laughs> okay. I can't blame you. So what's your, what's your favorite thing f um, about working for the Helen Duran company? Well, it's like being a part of a family, like part of a community all over the world. Um, you get to live the success stories with students and parents. Having my own learning center for the past 18 years, uh, I have students that started learning in my learning centers 18 years ago and now like when they were two, now they're, they are Helen Duron English teachers themselves. They joined our family. Um, you get to work with so many dedicated teachers and teacher trainers locally and around the world. Um, it feels great being part of all of this. Yeah, that's, that's quite a history to be proud of. So I see that uh, Helen Duron has joined us herself. So um, Helen, can you uh, just say hi to everyone and, and tell us, I, I don't think any introductions necessary for the CEO and founder, but would you mind telling us all those years ago, what really motivated you to start this company? So, um, Helen Duran, I'm from London originally. I have a degree in linguistic science and and French, and I, my, my, my higher degrees in linguistics as well. And um, I started many, many years ago and 35 years ago with this methodology, which I think I was able to do because I was a scientist and because I was a mother. 
And what motivated me to start this company was a desire to see children reach their full potential. Really, I saw too many children wasting their childhoods when they could be doing so many brain developing, interesting and emotionally stabilizing things. And I saw parents just not realizing the effects of their actions or what their children's potentials were. And I was frustrated and I wanted to see it. And then I came across this methodology and I started to implement my, my wider vision through this methodology of Helen Duran English. Thank you very much. And, and once again, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we're super happy and, and pleased that you were able to. Uh, and I look forward to discussing uh, some of your programs with you. But let's uh, maybe give the last couple of members of our team today a, a chance to introduce themselves. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your background with the company and what you do? Yes. Um, my name is Tom. I'm eight years in the company. Uh, from the kindergarten uh, program and a, mem a member in the um, business development team of math writers. I'm the acting MF for the Turkey opera, the kindergarten Turkey operation, and the account manager for Serbia and Croatia. And uh, my background is actually 20 years in intern. intern uh, I, I used to be a former franchisee for a wellness industry in the USA. Oh. You also sound like you're very busy over there at, uh, with the Helen Duran team. Lots of hats. Um, it makes it very interesting. Very, very interesting. And uh, that's something that I really, really. So what else do you really, uh, what's your favorite thing about working for the Helen Duran Group? Uh, my favorite thing is actually going and visiting in um, the kindergartens and meeting the parents and seeing the actually sometimes this is where we go and parents, their English is not so good. But a fluent conversation with the five-year-old that is in our kindergarten speaks an amazing amazing English so you know that it doesn't come from the parents and, the, and that we're doing something very very uh, very good yeah that's uh, fulfilling thank you very much and uh, Richard your turn last but hello. not least okay hello good uh, good afternoon uh, my name's uh, Richard Harris I'm lucky enough to be the uh, franchise development manager I've had a I've been here just over a year uh, my job is to find different regions, uh, like Southeast Asia, like the States, uh, and, uh, and develop those regions for Helen Duran. I'm also the uh, account manager for Bosnia and Slovakia. Oh, good. I'm very, very happy to be here. Welcome aboard to the team, and, and thank you for joining us on this call. So... Uh, what do you like about your job? You haven't been there as long as everyone else, but in the last year, you know, what's uh, motivating you to get out I of come, bed every day? I come from a marketing uh, high-tech background, which was a very different... Uh, um, working here, uh, as Eris said, it's, it's a nice to, to see the reaction of children that are learning English. Uh, and also working for a company that is more of a community family atmosphere than uh, a company that is uh, totally uh, directed to finance. So uh, it, it, it's a good feeling. Yeah, and I agree. Um, you know, Helen Duran Educational Group is, is definitely more uh, focused on actual results of children learning uh, to speak or learning math uh, much more than as a business model, like a lot of your competitors. So I think we'll come back to Helen. Let's talk a little bit about Helen Duran English program. Um, Mr. Ron, could you please give us a brief introduction about Helen Duran English? Sure. Helen Duran English, um, it's for children aged three months, that's right, from three months upwards to, which is the age of my youngest grandchild, to uh, 19 years. And um, it's based on the way children learn their mother tongue. Mm. It's very simple, really. I mean, when 
children learn their mother tongue by hearing it again and again and again. And then when one day they say mama, a mama goes, wow, that was great. And the kid thinks, hmm, I must have done something right. Let, let, I'll do it again. So that's positive reinforcement. So the child has a lot of hearing and they're statistical robots. They're analyzing what they hear the whole time. And of course, parents speak motherese or that's, that's a language which is simplified and slower normally for children. It's mm. automatic. All parents do it all over the world. So that's how they do it. So we did the same thing. We, um, we, I, I created a methodology which the children hear portions of speech in the background daily while eating, playing, going to bed. And then once or twice or three times a week, they meet with, in the class with the teacher in a group of kids, four to eight kids in a group. And they play, but around the vocabulary. They have nonstop games and dancing and singing all around the songs and everything they've learned. So when they've left the lesson, they know so much more. And after two months, we change the portion of sound and they go on to the next one. And they never remember how they learned. They never remember it being hard. It's just really easy. Of course, reading and writing is a little bit more straining because it's something they actually have to sit down and do and they may or may not have the skill set right at the beginning and they have to be trained but the spoken english for sure they it's just pure fun and games from beginning to end for teacher and and for the children it's all it's all properly organized they've got the teachers are trained they have pass fail teacher training courses in which they learn the methodology which they learn to give positive reinforcement, which they learn to give a smooth, good lesson and, in, and be interactive with the children in a visual, auditory and kinesthetic manner. So teachers are trained and there's ongoing training, which is absolutely unique. A lot of our competitors try to poach our teachers. And um, we, have, we have materials for, for all the different ages in Head and Draw English and all the time, we're adding, upgrading, updating, and doing. We have so much animation as well for the younger kids. It, it's one it's one big party, but there's a lot of hard work and curriculum design behind that party. And of course, we have a network of franchisees who, who joyfully carry this out. And um, I have to say that uh, they're very successful. They love what they do. We've had six quite simple people become very, very, very rich with this. And, um, and people love the network. That's a lot. Almost makes me want to go back to school. <laughs> sure. Well, we, listen, we have, a, we have over a thousand centers in 38 countries. It's, yeah. uh, and, and we're growing, we're growing. It's very impressive. It's very impressive. Now, I think you have already covered on a, a lot of really what makes uh, the Helen Duran program unique. Um, is there anything else that maybe you could add about what gives it a competitive advantage? Well, as I said, it's the methodology. We have a very strong methodology. It's the mat learning materials themselves. It's the music. We've written just in English because we have songs in other languages as well for different disciplines. With just the English, we've written well over a thousand songs for all the different age wow. groups. You know, all our, and of course we've, we've created animations to go with them. All our media we have streamed very nicely and parents have access to it to stream, streaming. It's in nonstop interaction, it's nonstop fun. It's extremely systematic. A teacher in, um, Rangoon, should there be one, would be able to work, walk into a teaching a center in Shanghai and say, what learning set are you on? What lesson? And just teach it. Oh. It's so systematic. And when this parent signs a kid up at three months, we know what that kid's going to be doing next month, in a year, in three years, and in 10 years, and in 15 years. The system's there. And it's very, very clear. I mean, that's, that's also very impressive and, and amazing. So, so thank you for that. Now, uh, you mentioned a little bit about Yangon, it's in, in Myanmar. 
you know, how are your brands doing in the Asian market? Um, and I know that you've only recently entered our region. Uh, it hasn't been the focus until, you know, in the last few years. But how is it doing in the Asian market? And, and, and what do you feel has contributed to that success? Well, of course, Israel's in Asia. And we've been here for very many years. And we do extremely well in Israel, of course. Uh, we have um, Helander on Korea, which we own, uh, it's self-owned business. And we went in with our kindergartens to, to pilot that. Uh, we spent six years piloting. It was never the intention. We, it turned out we needed a lot of changes for the, for the Korean market. And we believe that the Korean market being the most dense, the most mature, the most difficult one to get into, we thought if we could cut it there, we could cut it anywhere in, in, in Asia. And today we're doing very well. Uh, we've started franchising. Our franchisees, are, of course, we've been hit by the coronavirus towards the beginning of our franchising efforts. But um, they love it. The parents love it. They, they appreciate the difference between us and anywhere else um, as, as a kindergarten brand and as an English brand. And uh, the, the emphasis on early child development, the fact that we have so many special brands there that uh, I guess maybe we'll talk about in a minute when we talk about the kindergartens. But we're also in China today as well. Uh, we've been in China for quite a few years. We have a completely new general manager now who is really pulling things together very nice. We have a small team of people working there supporting our masters. And yeah, we... We're strongly, we're strongly in, in, in Asia, and especially in Southeast Asia. In fact, my son run is sitting in Korea, running the Helander on Korea. Well, that's good. That's good to know that it's working. Uh, so thank you. Maybe we'll uh, give someone else a chance to talk. Uh, maybe Eli can ask you a few questions. Um, you know, when you get a new franchisee, what is normally the biggest challenge that they face uh, when they start to develop a new territory? That's a good question, Robert. Different franchisees experience different challenges. Uh, for some, the challenge is positioning the brand among competitors um, and determining the, the right pricing strategy in new markets. For others, on the other hand, it's controlling the growth rate uh, in countries where the, the brand is already familiar and known. In some cases, people buy a franchise because they're expecting instant success. Uh, accomplishments uh, don't come overnight. Franchising, like uh, any other business, requires dedication, time, uh, and initiative. A good franchisor will be able to train new franchisees to handle all possible scenarios and help them maintain a realistic perspective. Yeah, thank you for that. That's uh, that's good. So you kind of touched on it um, that a good franchisor. So what kind of support does Helen Duran give to its new franchisees to really help get them started at the beginning and overcome those challenges? And then, as a second question, I guess what what what's the ongoing support look like? Okay. It starts with our specially crafted training that covers all aspects of the, of the operation, the business. The training is constantly being updated and we normally invite experienced franchisees on all levels uh, to take part in the training so they'll be able to share from their own knowledge and experience. We also provide comprehensive uh, business guides, our guidelines, which is the Helen Doron Bible and how to run the business. It encompasses knowledge that was accumulated for 35 years of operation. We deliver business uh, training manuals on different aspects of the business. And we obviously conduct uh, live training sessions on an ongoing base. Now each master franchisee is also assigned to a dedicated account manager. Uh, that operates as the lead point for contact for all aspects of the business. The, the account managers ensure timely and successful delivery of solutions uh, according to the customer's needs and objectives, obviously, 
and they support the onboarding process for new customers. They also help identify business opportunities and develop their respective markets. Our marketing team uh, provides fresh, relevant content for franchisees to use across multiple channels, and they supply them with hundreds of marketing collaterals and templates uh, to use in local campaigns. Our existing customers also support new customers. Uh, they support each other through mentoring. We have a very active customer forum, Facebook forum, uh, online and of course uh, customer conferences what about what about kind of from a business perspective though you know why is this industry educational franchising um, and Helen Duran specifically attractive as a business model like if we have we have quite a few people on this call uh, looking uh, to become potential franchisees or investors and obviously you know, they have to look at it from a business perspective as well. So what can you tell them? Well, education is a powerful agent of, of change. It improves health, uh, livelihood, and contributes to social stability and drives long-term economic growth. Education is one of the most important investments a parent can make in a child. Every parent wants his ve the very best for their children, uh, to see them flourish and, and succeed in their future. All great accomplishments that our children have and will, will do come down to us, the parents. Uh, for us in Helen Doron, education is not a mean. Uh, it's our mission, as Helen mentioned before. Uh, we are equipped with 35 years of experience. We have a proven model. Uh, our unique methodology uh, became a golden standard in this in industry. Uh, we train our team and we deliver the results. Yeah, I think the results and the kids uh, kind of say it all. When your product works, um, then the rest kind of follows, right? Definitely. Thanks, Eli. That was uh, some great answers. And maybe um, let's talk with Renine for a couple of minutes. So. Uh, you are the Math Writers Development Manager, or were at least a, a key member in developing that program. Can you give us just a brief introduction to the Math Writers brand? Of course. Um, the Helen Dorn Math Writers is based upon a proving successful methodology that understands children's different learning styles and open their minds um, to the language of math. It's a program for ages uh, 2 to 19, uh, small groups, just like the Helen Dorn English, for four to eight uh, students in each group. Um, we use our own workbooks, materials, games, activities, songs, stories, math stories. Um, the lessons are very dynamic and creative. Um, and I think that builds confidence uh, through positive reinforcement. And, and so they don't just come in and, and write math tests and do questions like they do at school? Well, um, well we more guide students um, and we encourage them to ask and research, not just answer questions like, like in schools, maybe. Uh, we teach by reasoning, not memorizing. Mm. You don't need to memorize to be able to be good in math. And we do that in a fun and creative way. Um, how to use math to solve daily life problems. Um, we sh showing the student that math is everywhere around them. For example, a student needs to explain um, what she understands they have done and what it, what it shows. It's a leadership skill development. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, but then after they do that, they translate what they uh, what was learned in um, real world into exercises in their workbooks that we create. Hmm. The goal is if I can give you an example. Uh, am I muted? No, no. I can go ahead, Helen. Example. I can give you an example. For example, from real life, a very simple one. The one that doesn't need lots of equipment and number lines. I mean, they, they, you see these kids jumping up and down number lines. You see them working with weights, you see them doing other things. But a really simple one would just be the learning of fractions. 
in which they learn to, to, to fold their, to fold paper. You fold it in half, they fold it and that in half, they fold that in half again, and they've got, they've got 16 little cubes, and then they have to, and then they, they, they color two of them, and they see what fraction of it is, and they color, and color another four. So they really do things. So they can get a deeper understanding. They just don't have these numbers on a on a on a piece of paper. So they really understand mathematical thinking, and that is what is so exciting. So they go from three D real world, then they sit down and do it on their paper, and they know what they're talking about. It isn't just manipulating numbers. Very exciting. No, that was a and great so. that was a great example. <laughs> Easy to understand. I should have tried that with my son when he was learning fractions. <laughs> I had a difficult time with that one. Um, um, and you know, Remy, the, goal just for, go ahead. the goal isn't just for the grades to go up, uh, Robert. It's also, uh, although that what happened at the end is to uh, think and deeply understand math, as Helen said. I remember from my uh, four years old student, uh, two years ago, I think, um, uh, during the class, she said, you know, in the math writer lessons, they don't just teach us how to calculate one plus one. They teach us how to think. And that came from a four years old student. So I think that sums it up. Wow, that sounds like something a parent would say, not a four year old. Well, yeah. you're, you're definitely accom accomplishing something with them. So I, I think we also kind of covered what makes uh, the math writers unique. What about a competitive advantage? Is there anything else you can add? Um, you know, because I, I'm sure there are other math programs in the industry. Uh, what kind of stands out as your advantage? Well, we make sure to keep a competitive edge aligning to uh, market trends while keeping in line with our unique system and methodology. And um, we will never compromise on the quality of uh, products or services, never. I think that runs across, I think that runs across your whole group, right? No, yeah. no compromising. The education. Okay. Yeah, that's, I, I think that's uh, quite special, actually. One other thing I find quite special about the Helen Duran Education Group is your focus on R&D. Now, you've done this for 35 years, um, but your English program is not the same as it was 35 years ago. And I, I think that's kind of special because a lot of companies, when something is finished, when it's working, they're happy just to leave it alone. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your R&D program and, and what you do and why and, and how? Who is this for, Renin or for me? Renin, no? It's I think Renin, yeah. For me. Uh, actually, Renin switched it off. I think she wants me to answer it. <laughs> OK, I'll say a few words. OK. Because up, up until a few months ago, I ran the R&D. Renine is with the R, has been running the R and D for the last six months, but it's the first time I've had anyone else run the R and D. I always did it personally. So I always had the two hats. I was a CEO and I was head of development. So um, the world changes; it's never static. Language changes, children change, expectations change, teachers evolve, we evolve, we improve. We're always looking to add another aspect. Maybe it's an extra course that covers a certain amount of kids that didn't quite fit into one or the other group. It can be an upgrade of an existing program. There's so much to do the whole time. It just never finishes. For example, at the moment, we have a big demand all of a sudden for large groups. That means working in, if we have a learning center, He's part of a community and there's schools and there's kindergartens around. And we have, but we actually have a sub brand that in some countries in non Helen Duran kindergartens. But uh, we have, we're working on a sub brand for large groups in general because it's all of a sudden a demand for it because uh, people want more English. People get to hear about us and they say, Have you got anything for our schools? And we don't want to give them the same materials that are in our small groups because a they're built for the small groups and b we don't want to cannibalize and uh, and and teach the same materials in schools and in our kinder and in our centers so we we are working on the development of large groups at the moment we have quite a lot already and we're training teachers for how to work with these large groups 
So we're developing the whole time as development. We had a lot of development over the coronavirus time where we had to move online all of a sudden during the pandemic. And within a month, uh, Renine and her crew had produced over 600 online lessons at, at interactive PowerPoints in which the teacher could just log on and move in. So because she was at home and the kids were at home and, uh, and it was very hard. So the development department is, works a lot, and it's not just limited to what's in headquarters. We work with uh, experienced development teachers who work with us around the world. So we, we get input from around the world. We have a very wide range of what's needed in all the different countries. That's great. And, and I applaud you for you know dedicating such resources to an ongoing research and development. I think it's one of the things that I noticed at the very beginning when we started working together. Uh, so thank you, Renin, for your answers and, and thank you, Helen, for that one. Um, maybe Arez, maybe let's uh, put you in the hot seat for a few minutes. Um, now, similar to Renin with the math writers, uh, you're the kindergarten development manager. Um, can you give us a, a brief, <coughs> actually, Maybe Helen would do that. Um, give us a brief in introduction to Helen Duran Kindergartens. Why did it start? What is it? Well, when I started, uh, my goal was never just English. I wanted a complete education for the very young, for the very early years. And that was because I didn't think enough was being done with kids. I saw my own children wanting more and more and more and me thinking, Goodness, what else can I do with them? And uh, because I could see they could take anything I threw at them in a systematic manner. <clears throat> so I read a lot of books and people doing things like that. But I, I didn't have the, where, the, the means to develop the kindergartens. I stuck with the English and I developed that more and more and more. But it came to the time where I said, I must actually go the path I always wanted to, which is kindergartens. And our kindergartens have, of course, Helen on English, but they have much more. Um, in some countries, we have reading and writing. Turkey, for example, doesn't allow it. Korea, of course, they want them reading and writing by the age of three. Uh, <laughs> so very different expectations in different countries. We have our own science program called ISI, and it's, of course, very musical as well. Music's very much a part of it. The hard concepts we put into song, so that the kids will never forget it our harder concepts, and uh, we have our own mathematics program, of course, Mathoritis is part of this from the age of two. We have our, a, a program called Ready, Steady, Move, which is language, language through movement and doing. We have Pilates, dance, yoga, and uh, of course, you've got videos for this for the kids to practice at home as well, and, and repeated hearing there. We have a very special program called Multi Music, which is a four year curriculum of the same songs in um, seven different languages with all activities around them. Not that we think the kids were gonna, are going to come out speaking these seven languages. They'll, they'll sing the songs in these languages. It's, it's, um, it's so that they'll come out and have the basis of the grammar and the phonics and some vocabulary so that when they do learn these languages, which range from Mandarin to Russian to, to German, French, um, uh, Turkish, and I know I've missed one. Never mind. Anyway, so whenever, whenever we do, whenever we do, uh, of course, English as well. Whenever we, whenever they come out, they, they they're actually able to interact and they understand and they do because this is a, it's kids are sponges at this age and they just pick it up. So the challenge was and enabling the teachers to teach this when they don't speak the languages. So that, 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 was, that was the more difficult part of it. But uh, once we'd enabled and we'd made it possible for the teachers to do this easily, it just flowed. And the parents love this, love, they get it. They really get it. And uh, so those are the main parts of our kindergarten. We also have a plant-based menu and we educate parents in the importance of health and how to eat and we produced a series of videos now with the British dietitian um, on 
how, whether we, what, what snacks can be given and how to snack or how often to eat and sugar, no sugar, fat, no fat, and all the things that parents are asking themselves to reproduce that. We also have courses for parents and teachers to teach them about nutrition. You know, if you want your kid to be focused, you can't just be, t- can't just be the mind. He's going to be eating the right things that are going to allow him to be focused. He's going to be eating the right things that are going to give him a future in life. Um, because what you learn to eat at this age is sort of going to be your habits later on. So, yeah. so we, we have food for the mind, we have food for the body, we train our teachers, and we are very excited about the program we're offering, um, which is very good. I even have my own cookbook, actually. I heard that. You yes. haven't sent... You haven't sent- <laughs> You haven't sent me one yet. I'm still waiting. I will do. I will do. Sorry. Okay. I got you. All, I got you on video saying that. So. <laughs> so, you know, when we look at the, the kindergartens, um, I think it is unique. Um, Arez, can you add anything about uh, specifically com- its competitive advantage or how it compares to other kindergartens that might be in the market? Anything that Helen missed? First of all, I want to say that uh, we provide we provide three different models of the kindergarten. We have the uh, all English, which is uh, practiced in Korea, and they have huge success with this model. Uh, it makes uh, I would say the operation easier to operate when it comes to uh, recruiting. Uh, you don't need to have two levels of teachers in, in, in the kindergarten. We have in Turkey, we have the English enriched, which is a teach, a local teacher in each class and half of the, uh, the and, and one English teacher that's, uh, that splits half day in one class in half in the other. And then we have the third model, which is a full bilingual model. Okay. Which actually uh, uh, is two t- two teachers at all times in the classroom. Very expensive model. Yes, it That's is. <laughs> and it's because of this, uh, because of the financial aspect, it's a less, um, it, it, it's a model, uh, it's very, very difficult to implement. So that would be, you know, if you wanted to go into a market with a very premium sort of product for that one but it's nice that we we've got some variations depending on what's going to work the best in the market then yes i think it depends on the country uh, i actually always call that two models because between the english and rich and the bilingual it's more of a uh, there's an overlap there but uh in countries like korea countries like korea where you can do private kindergartens that are not connected to the Ministry of Education, um, then this model of English only uh, works. So they do have what they call the corridor teachers who who speak Korean who come in and out and help if needed. But it's it's an English only model. Whereas um, in a country like um, Turkey, that has to work with the curriculum of the Ministry of Education in kindergarten, then this bilingual or English enriched model is the one that, that, that was chosen. Okay. So just to be very clear to everyone, if the Ministry of Education has specific rules that you have to follow uh, the curriculum in that country, you, they could still open a Helen Duran kindergarten by following that curriculum plus adding elements from the Helen Duran kindergarten to be that sort of blended model, correct? We have practically all the elements there. They've got a very long day. <laughs> okay. Yes. But as long as it's possible, because I know some of our uh, potential franchisees who have interest, they are in countries. Some of them are in countries where their uh, kindergartens are open to have international ones that have nothing to do with the curriculum of you know Vietnam or Myanmar, but uh, in other countries, the, the rules are different. So it's nice to know that the Helen Duran uh, kindergarten format will work uh, regardless. So what about, um, Arez, what, what is attractive about the kindergarten industry uh, for an investor or a potential franchisee? 
I think that actually Eli uh, answered that question very, very, in, in very uh, nicely, which reflects exactly the benefits and the advantages that we have in the kindergarten and in the Helen Deron English model as well. Okay, uh, we provide the same kind of services regarding the account manager uh, support and the online and the uh, ongoing support that we provide. Uh, and um, what uh, makes us uh, very, our, our mission is to make those franchisees successful. Well, that's their success is our success. Yes, yes, exactly. Well, that's, that's a good attitude to have. Uh, so, Richard, maybe uh, I can ask you a few questions. Uh, the last, you're always at the end, I'm sorry. No, no problem. <laughs> so, I, I guess I'll start with something a little bit general. You know, why, why should people, in your opinion, because I, I think it's been touched a little bit, be interested in education franchising? Because I know a lot of people who send us inquiries uh, you know, they're not in the education industry. Is, is that okay? Do they have to be? Uh, and why should they be interested in this industry in general? And then maybe Helen Duran in specific. Uh, we're looking for people who have business sense um, that can uh, develop a successful business. I mean, that, that is probably the most uh, important thing. But while they're doing that, they're doing something good for the community. There's, they're uh, supporting their community uh, locally, uh, supplying jobs, uh, and they're also doing good for their, for their children, for their future. Um, so I think that's the most important thing. Um, I think uh, our community of franchisees at the moment reflects this, uh, that we have a community of people that want a, bus want a business, but they also want to do something special for their community. And that, that's what we have at the moment. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's I, and I think you have about a 100 master franchisees, you know, already in your group, right? That's right. We have one, around 100 master franchisees and uh, just over 1,100 sub-franchised uh, units. Oh, yeah. So you definitely have the experience. So, yeah. you know, in, in the history of, of Helen Drawn, um, maybe is there any recent interesting news that maybe you could share with uh, our viewers? Most, most definitely. Uh, it's not only us thinking that we're, we're great. Uh, our peers also uh, have, have shown us that uh, they appreciate us. In the last two years, uh, in 2019, we won from the Global Franchise Awards, uh, the, the best educational children's franchise, which was awarded to Helen in Las Vegas. This year in, uh, in February, I was also with Helen this time. Uh, it was very exciting. She won the best mentorship award. Uh, from the franchise uh, Global Franchise Awards, uh, and this year, just uh, just over a month ago, she was awarded um, one of the most influential uh, businesswomen uh, in four actually top franchising uh, awards for mentorship and support for mentorship and support exactly. Wow, well that is impressive because there are there there are a lot of franchises out there, so exactly. you know when you can win number one in in one of your categories. I mean, that says something uh, about your team. It says something about, I think that's very interesting for people. Now you're, you're on the, you know, development side. So you're one of the first uh, people that get to speak with a potential investor or, or franchisee. You know, maybe you could tell us what are the criteria? What are the main things that you look for in any new um, franchisee? Um business sense. Um, it's a business, basically, and it's something that, that should be financially sound, and they should be making a return of investment. Uh, but those people also need to have uh, a big heart to, uh, because it, it's not retail franchising, it's not a, it's not a, a McDonald's. We're, we're dealing with children here, we're dealing with parents, we're dealing with families. Uh, and that's something that's very different from other kind of franchising. So we're looking for for a certain kind of people, a certain kind of investor. And they would, they would really bring a lot of the local market knowledge as well. Exactly. So they, I mean, it's, it's networking, basically, franchising. And uh, 
as uh, our current uh, franchisees, uh, we have a huge network. And uh, a lot of those people come from inside that network to become uh, master franchisees. We've um, had people who've been with us for over 20 years. We've had masters who've been with us for over 20 years. And, and we have students that are now, that were teachers, and now they're master franchises. So, oh. you know, you can't really beat that. No, but that, that pretty much uh, puts the stamp on the, uh, the whole, uh, the whole uh, package. They, they still remember the cutting of the learning fragments. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lifetime thing. I mean, Helen has the, the vision. She uh, grew this company from, from zero into what it is today. Um, and I think it's also important that, that uh, the Helen Duran brand is a real person. It's not, uh, it's not a fictive brand or you know, a fictive face on a, on a package. It's a real person who uh, cares. And we also support her. No, I, I agree. Now, uh, specifically because my territory or our, our territory is Asia. So what markets are, are taken already in Asia? If you could share that. Uh, in Asia, we have at the <clears throat> moment uh, 24 master franchises in China uh, with over 80 fran sub-franchise units. Uh, we have a master franchise in Vietnam in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, a smaller district. And also in uh, Bangkok, in Thailand, we have a master franchise in a district of uh, Bangkok. Okay. And of course, as Helen said before, the uh, Korean uh, kindergarten uh, enterprise. Okay. But from my understanding, your, your territories can be fairly small. So uh, just because you have one master franchisee already in Vietnam or Thailand, those markets are still open for exactly. additional exactly. development, right? We have, we have two... Um, models, the master franchising model, which is up to around, uh, usually around 5 million, okay. that we franchise maybe a city or an area. Yep. And those, uh, that master franchise sells uh, learning centers to sub-franchisees, uh, smaller areas. And we have a MUD model as well, which is a multi-unit developer, which we sell to larger areas who, front, who invest their own uh, money to uh, open uh, learning centers. Actually, in Thailand, we're helping our existing master um, sell because she's been with us for quite some years and due to personal reasons, she's not able to continue. So uh, Thailand, Thai, uh, well, uh, Bangkok and, and the rest of Thailand are actually open to, to purchase. Okay. And what we have in Vietnam at present is very small. Okay. Yeah, just uh, one district, I think. That's my yeah, backyard, that's very, so. Very, very small, yeah. Yeah, so that's. We're, uh, we're also looking to penetrate uh, deeper into uh, China as well. It's such a huge market. Yes, yeah. Even 24 master franchisees doesn't cover China. So <laughs> lots of room, lots of room to grow there. Uh, it sounds big and it is big, but China's bigger. Yes. Yeah. Um, Helen, if you wouldn't mind, uh, we're, we're kind of running out of time. So I want to summarize with uh, maybe the elephant in the room, uh, something that everybody is concerned with. You know, we know that 2020 has had some very unique challenges across all industries. So this is not just uh, the education industry alone, but it's, but it's everywhere. So can you tell me some of the things that have faced you in the last six months and really kind of your reaction how did helen duran as a group how did you guys band together as a group and overcome um, the challenges that we've seen in the last six to eight months i was actually in korea at the end of um at the end of february and i watched our kindergartens and centers closing down there it was very depressing um i watched my grandchildren come home not to be in kindergarten anymore and uh, came back and we sat and we saw we had to send everybody home from the company, you know, and some were on furlough, some continued working from home. And what did we do for our franchisees? We watched them, every single franchisee worldwide closed down. It was, uh, it was quite shocking. But we, as I mentioned before, we immediately got going on online lessons and our teachers met the challenge and our franchisees met the challenge. And in most areas, 
um, online was fully embraced. In fact, our back to school campaign this year for, for the Western world um, in, in uh, what was at home and at, at the learning center. That means if we are closed out, we continue at home. If we're okay, we can go back to the learning center. And in fact, this is exactly what's happening. This swing between the learning center and at home. And these, this was our, these were our marketing materials. So we've managed to salvage most of our franchisees and their livelihood by the online. The, the ones who didn't embrace online because they thought it would just take a few weeks and they could make it up, they were in trouble because they didn't listen to us. But the vast majority embraced it fully, persuaded parents and moved forward. And our registration forms this year stated very clearly that if they couldn't be in the learning center, they would have to continue at home and there was no money back. So this was to keep, to keep the network going and keep the network strong. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. And we've produced online seminars for our teachers also to teach them all sorts of skills in online teaching. It's a very, and we've started training our teachers online. We've never done that before either. There's so many challenges, but our te we, know we have a network of teacher trainers. They, they're the creme de la creme, really they are. They're the best of the best. And they're not easy to find. These dedicated, clever pedagogues that can train other people. And we meet together for a week every year to, to, to learn new materials, to learn new skills, and work together there. We're, we're a community within a community of the teacher trainers. And this online is what we're doing at the moment. Not that every, but if you interview the kids, you know, we have our own radio station in Helen Duran English uh, for the teens, the tweens of the teens. And I listened care, listen carefully to interviews and, uh, and they were being asked all around the world. Some of the teens run programs as well. They were being asked, well, you're online, do you like it? Yeah, we love it. Do you want to stay online or go back to class? We want to go back to class. It doesn't replace the classroom. The kids want to be back in class and have fun and see their friends and, 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 and be there. But if they have to, they're online. That's, that's the way of the world at the moment. May, may it pass soon. Okay, thank you. And, and I'm sure your whole network appreciates how fast you were able to react and get them yeah. the support they needed. Uh, you know, it's something that nobody expected, uh, but uh, that's one of the advantages of you know, having a franchisor like your company. Uh, so that's one of the, the big bonuses that people, uh, you know, get when they become a Helen Duran franchisee. So now what's going to change? What do you see changing next year? So let's look, uh, we talked about 2020. What's coming in 2021? Okay. I hope that our franchisees will get back to their present well, the 2019 student numbers, those have had a drop. Some of our franchisees have actually grown this year, despite everything. In fact, some have grown quite, quite greatly. It's, it's quite surprising, but um, most, most of them have seen a slight drop in their student numbers. We hope to see them back there again. One of the things that we've developed is called Helen Duron Plus. This is something, a completely new development Helen Ron Plus is for our Helen Ron English Learning Centers. It's a program that they can do in the morning and during the day. And it has some of our kindergarten courses in it. Not all of them, but some of them. And, and uh, it al allows the franchisees to use the center, not just in the afternoon or weekends or whenever it's going to be used, but the whole time to be able to use it mornings, afternoons. So it gives more work to teachers brings in more income. We want to see Helen Duron Plus, which we're just launching at the moment. We want to see this move and grow. We see a great potential here. And um, it's not kindergarten. It's not kindergarten premises. They don't look the same. They're still smaller groups. They're not all, they're not all the programs that we have. But it's something. It's something that they can do in the morning. And the parents will know this is a lot more interesting for their kids than normal daycare. Uh, yeah. We have yeah. Helen Duran classes either with the parents, which we call a um, playgroup, or it's childcare, which is without parents. We have both opportunities. We want to expand our math riders and our kindergarten um, uh, programs a lot more. 
we have the thought to move into other languages and we're at the moment in talks with various people in the USA to move with them. It may or may not happen, but we're in talks at the moment. All extremely dynamic. And we're also working on an e-learning program, which is not like online. Online is PowerPoints of our existing, our interactive PowerPoints of what we have existing. And it's instead of in the classroom, but e-learning is a total gamification of what we do. So we're working on, and it's a completely different company as well. So there's so much we're working on at the moment. And it's all very dynamic, all very exciting. And you've got no idea how many projects we have at the moment. Our co corporate project manager is walking around with a hand on her head the whole time. <laughs> That's why he's not on our call. He's too busy. <laughs> too, too many projects. She's far, she has far too many projects now. Yeah. By the way, we're mainly women dominated, not like what you see here where you've got three men and two women. The majority of our company is, is women. Just the way it worked out. I'm not gonna comment on that at all because no matter what I say, I'm in trouble. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, any final thoughts that you would like to share uh, with our viewers? Any, any concluding? ideas from anyone We're out of time it's been our one hour session um, I know we could probably talk for two more hours uh, about your amazing program but uh, maybe we can go around the room any final comments that you would just like to say uh, out there about your program about why sh people should be interested whatever whatever you want to talk about uh, for a business development side uh, I'd like to see us uh, in Myanmar in the Philippines and in Japan, uh, and as I said, uh, further into the South uh, East Asian uh, uh, arena. We're working on that. Yeah, I understand. Arez? For my part is that uh, all the future uh, projects that just Helen pointed out that are very, very exciting. And uh, if it makes me very, very proud to be part of this uh, unique group doing these projects. Yeah, thank you both. Uh, Renine? Well, um, I, if I start talking, I want to like stop and the, you will have to stop me some, somehow uh, and you will not be able to do that. But um, I, will, I will say something about Helen personally. Um, I didn't like, I didn't, I, I met Helen only the past few years, I think, when I started working here. I used to meet her here and there. Uh, after you work with the people that's working here uh, and get all the support needed from everyone. Uh, we talked a few minutes um, ago about um, uh, the coronavirus virus, the, uh, crisis that we got in. And I remember during that month, um, two months, I think, uh, we were meeting um, via Skype every single day, every single hour. Uh, and you could see like people are working, doing extra hours and they don't care because you could see the results, you could see um, the success and you could see uh, the endless support that we're getting from everyone around us. So it's a great family and a great team to work with. Thank you, that was perfect. You, you, I don't know if you get a raise or not though. So. No, I don't. <laughs> Eli, let's end with you. All right. The way I see it, there's still so much business potential and, and possibilities out there. I'm really excited about it. Uh, if any of our viewers uh, feel the same, I'll be happy to, to explore these possibilities with you and, and, and see if, there's, if we can welcome you guys to our, to our international franchise network. Thank you. So on, on behalf of our VF Franchise Consulting team, uh, on behalf of all of our listeners and the people that we'll share uh, this video with afterwards who weren't able to attend, we'd like to thank uh, Helen Duran herself and her great team for joining us today uh, and sharing some great information. Um, we know that you're all busy, so we, we really do appreciate it. I think it helps to put a face um, to the names uh, and to really put a, a face on the brand and the company itself. So 
I think uh, it was very helpful uh, for everybody listening due to the large number of attendees and the many countries that you're from. You know, we did not cover specific territory fees and requirements. Uh, it just wouldn't be possible. So for those who have specific market questions, we will be sending out a, a follow-up email with you. Uh, so please respond. Uh, any questions that you have, uh, tell us what territory you're interested in, and we're happy to get into uh, a little bit more details and get you the answers that you need um, on the business side of things to really make an educated decision. And for those who want to proceed to the next step, uh, next step would be uh, collecting an NDA, a little bit of information from you, and then we will schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with the Helen Duran team, uh, and you can really meet them in person uh, and discuss how you can bring this exciting, one of these exciting brands uh, to your city or to your country. Uh, again, thank you everyone for attending. Thank you panelists for joining us. And that does conclude our webinar for today. I'm 10 minutes over, I'm sorry about that, but uh, we got through a lot of information uh, so thank you for bearing with me. So have a great day. Stay safe. Bye. And goodbye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Have a great day, guys. Bye. Thank you.